Hello and welcome back to the Consistory of the Co-op YouTube channel. I've been your host for this video, Reverend Jack Zabel of the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Today we're going to be continuing our mini-series on a brief introduction to uh, heresies. And today we're going to be focusing our attention on Arianism. But... Before we get into that topic, I just want to talk about the topic of Unitarianism in general. In my last video on A Brief History to Heresies, we discussed Valentinianism, which was just a tritheist heresy, just believed there was three different gods. Now, the Catholic view, and by Catholic I mean the universal Christian view, of the Trinity is that we believe that there are three persons but one God. So that's Trinitarianism. There is the broad category of heresies known as Unitarianism. Unitarians believe that there is one God and one person, not three persons. So the Trinitarians and the Unitarians agree that there is one God, but we disagree on the number of persons. Trinitarians believe in three persons, Unitarians believe in one person. And there is not one Unitarian heresy. There are many different Unitarian heresies, such as Arianism, Partialism, Modalism, and many others that we're going to discuss in the following videos. So for this video, we're going to be focusing on Arianism. So Arianism comes from the followers of Arius of Alexandria, who lived between the years 256 to 336 AD. And the thing about Arius is that out of all these Trinitarian or Unitarian heresies, he's probably one of the most popular and widespread. There was an actual period of time that a majority of the church actually believed in the Arian heresy and that the true Trinitarian church became a minority amongst Christians. So this was one of the heresies that became like the most popular. See, Arius taught that there is only one God and one person. So, the Father. He taught then that Jesus was a created being, that he is of a similar substance to the Father, homoousius, rather than hom homoousius, which means of the same substance. Arius believed that Jesus was like God, but that he wasn't actually God himself. Arius taught that the Son and the Spirit were creations of God, similar to how light and heat are produced by a fire, but are not the fire itself. Arius believed that Jesus was God's first and foremost creation through which the rest of the creation was made, but that Jesus was not eternal. Arius believed that there was a time in which the Son was not. So Jesus is kind of this God-like being He's like God, he's of the same substance of God. In, in most respect, he is God, except he's not eternal God. He's not all-powerful God. He, he's, he's, he's created by the Father. He's, he comes, he's like a God that was created by God, kind of. That's, that's kind of a, not an exact way of explaining Arianism, but it's kind of what Arius is getting at. And so, at the Council of Nicaea, this was called together to debate this topic of Arianism. And at the Council of Nicaea, there were actually five different views that were being put forth. There was, of course, the homoousius view, that is that Jesus is of the same substance of the Father. This is the Trinitarian view. There was the homoousius view. This is the teaching of Arius, that Jesus was of similar substance to the Father but that he was a creation of the Father, and that he was not God himself. There's the Homoians. Uh, these are also known as the Acacians, because they followed Acacius of Caesarea. Uh, Acacius taught that Jesus was like the Father in all things. Uh, similar to God, but he didn't... So, Acacius you know, essentially was like Arianism, but he didn't talk about substance. He was a step closer to the truth, but he was still also 
essentially Semian, Semiarian. So the the Homians or the Acacians were like Semiarians. They they didn't use this term substance. They say that Jesus is like God in all things, but he's not God. So they're still kind of falling into like a Semiarian era, but they didn't go full on Arianism because they didn't have this idea of a like a similar substance. Then there's also it was just the outright uh, Heterousians, these were those who said that Jesus was of a different substance to God. They believed that Jesus was the firstborn of creation and that he was nothing like God. Uh, the, the Heterousians are the Eunomians that are mentioned in Article 1 of the Augsburg Confession. They believe in this position of Heterousianism. Uh, the Eunomians were the followers of Eunomius of Sazicus, who died in the year 393. Now, I could have done a separate video on uh, the Eunomians, but it'd be like one sentence. So I thought I might as well have just included them here in our discussion about Arius. And there was also a fifth position held at the Council of Nicaea. This one doesn't get a special name. It was just the position held by uh, two theologians, uh, Marcellus of Ancyra and Fontanus of Sermonium. And these two theologians were present at the Council of Nicaea, and they just taught Jesus was an ordinary man. So they don't really get a special name, it's just kind of they deny the divinity of Jesus at all. They don't, they don't believe Jesus was God full stop, or even like God in any way, he was just an ordinary human. So, I don't know, humanism or something, just, just a complete denial of the incarnation. And... Those are kind of the five different views that were proposed at the Council of Nicaea, and in the end, the Council agreed to go with the Trinitarian view, the Biblical view, that there are three persons and one God, and that Jesus is God because that is what Scripture teaches. Jesus is God. Uh, as we teach in the very first verse of the first chapter of John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. You can also see this in places like in the Old Testament where you get the angel of the Lord, particularly in the burning bush uh, incident with Moses where the angel of the Lord shows up and at one point he's referred to as the angel of the Lord is in the bush and then later the voice speaking out of the bush identifies himself as the Lord, as Yahweh, the I Am. So this figure in the bush is both called the angel of the Lord and the Lord. Uh, so the same thing we get with the first verse of John chapter 1. The Word is both God and with God. So you have one God, but multiple persons. And so that's a Trinitarian view. So I hope that helps explain the um, heresy of Arianism. This is probably going to be the longest of the Unitarian heresies that I discussed. The next few videos are going to be much shorter. Like I said, I could have done an entire video just on the topic of the Eunomians. As I said, I could have done a separate video on the Eunomians, but that's like a single sentence. At least with the other heresies we're going to discuss, it's going to be a little bit longer. They're going to be shorter videos, but they will be a little bit longer than one sentence. So I thought I'd include the Eunomians in this video, but I'll save the other Unitarian heresies for their own videos. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.